Hey everyone and welcome to another installment of Camera Carnage. I'm Ryan from Seymour Carnage Photography and we're going to do something a little bit different today. Instead of sharing a money-saving tip or hack for you, we're going to talk about RAW files and how to get the most out of yours, especially if you're a Fujifilm shooter like me. So, RAW files. They're unique to every camera manufacturer. A Sony RAW file will look different than a Nikon or a Canon or a Fuji RAW file. And if you open a RAW file from any one of those manufacturers in different image editing programs, it's going to look different as well because of the way that software is interpreting and rendering that RAW file. Kind of annoying, right? Well. I'm a Fujifilm shooter, and one of the biggest complaints in our community is how poorly Lightroom handles the RAW files from Fuji's X-Trans sensors. I won't go into the boring details, but the bottom line is that the Fujifilm sensors read color and light differently than the more popular Bayer sensors. The way Lightroom processes those Fujifilm RAW files by default usually leads to issues with sharpness and poor colors and strange artifacts. Some programs like Capture One have put a little more work into how their program handles Fujifilm RAWs, and so they come out looking better. But Lightroom is kind of the household name in image editing, and what if you're heavily invested in the Adobe ecosystem like I am? Well, enter DxO Pure Raw 2. So if you don't know DxO, they have been measuring and evaluating pretty much every sensor and lens made for years and years and years and sharing those results on dxomark.com. In the last few years they've decided to leverage all of that data and use it to make a better raw processing engine. Their latest release, DxO Pure Raw 2, boasts optimized file handling for Fujifilm RAWs and I wanted to see what all the hype was about and if it really made a difference. DxO has their own fully featured image editing suite called Photolab 6, but since I wanted to stay with Lightroom, I downloaded the standalone version of the DxO Pure Raw 2. To make it perfectly clear, I am in no way affiliated with DxO, and I was neither solicited nor compensated for this review. So this is what DxO Pure Raw 2 looks like when I'm using it as a standalone from the desktop. So it opens up to this very simple interface, and you can add files, drag or drop. Um, just I'm going to click on here, and we're going to. Choose a file, opens it up, we go to process. So this is where it gives you your different options. So you've got high quality, which is just for your average image. Then there's prime, uh, which says it's better for low light. And then there's deep prime, which uh, takes advantage of their deep learning technology and also adds the global lens sharpening option. Uh, to your images that HQ and Prime don't have. Um, interestingly enough, it seems to take less time than the Prime mode does. All of the images that I'm sharing with you today were just run through the Deep Prime filter for the sake of consistency and were output to G DNG before opened in Lightroom. If you don't want to process your files using the standalone DxO Pure Raw 2 application, like I just showed you, you can use it as a plug-in while you're in Lightroom, either from the Library or Develop tab if you go down to any RAW in your picker, and you right-click and go to Export, then you'll see the option process with DxO Pure Raw 2. So this is nice if you've you know already gone through your library and picked everything you want and you've been developing things and maybe you just want to further process a couple files to get the most out of them. Uh, it can save you some time over you know, batch processing everything before you import, which is nice. Alright, so let's check out some photos here. Um, 
First of all, so shooting indoors, some of these are pretty high ISO. These are running at ISO 3200 at 1/30th, a handheld, and if we we zoom in here on this note, you can just tell right off the bat that everything's a little more crisp. If you look at the the punch out here compared to the other side, uh, the lines are just much clearer. All the shaded areas are just filled with noise and you have got a lot of pixelization and noise uh, across the sheet of paper in its entirety. Same thing in the wood. Uh, everything is just a little cleaner, a little sharper. If we jump over here into the background and compare these two, like look at how much more pronounced the haloing is um, around the edges of the object in the back and uh, how much pixelization we have going on here. Everything is just uh, really muddy and speckled. Uh, moving on to this shot is brighter shot ISO 160 at 56 and if we zoom in on her face this is what the Fuji guys mean when they talk about the warming effect if you look at her skin you know, and her makeup over here everything is is nice and smooth and balanced over here you see we've got these vertical and horizontal just worm trails these artifacts they're breaking up what would otherwise be uh, a smooth and clear image you can see it definitely down here in the neck as well uh, moving on to this shot of flower cart uh, immediately when we zoom in like look at the huge difference in clarity all these flowers um, everything from the gradients from the orange to the yellow, everything is just washed out to an orange color. All of the all of the texture, all of the detail is is completely smashed away. Everything is just over smoothed and muddy over here. All that detail is just wiped out. And this is a well lit photo at a high shutter speed. There's just no real excuse for that. Uh, moving on to this shot from Disneyland. If you look again, like look at all this nice texture in here and the details. Everything is very clear and very well rendered. When you move over here, everything has just been smoothed out. It's muddy and flat and all of that crisp detail is gone and just smoothed over. So moving on to our next shot, this is of the Queen Mary. And if we zoom in here, the first thing you'll notice is that you know, the text is obviously sharper and less blurry. But then when we move down into these sections with the wild lines and all the rivets, just look at the difference in detail and contrast. Uh, these all really pop and look well defined even at this distance. But when we move over here, everything is just is blurry and low contrast like it all just kind of blends in to the black and lacks a lot of detail same thing with this placard here from the park across the water from the queen mary if we zoom in to these worn and dirty sections if we look here at uh, the bare metal underneath where the coating is worn off or you know these chunks of dirt and such on here all of this is just just blurry and smooth. Doesn't look like the same image. You don't see the individual, you know, grains of dirt in here, and you don't see any of that fine texture in the metal. Um, everything is just soft and smeared. Jumping over to some shots from Hearst Castle. This one's real interesting. If we zoom in on the stairs here and we look at how the color is handled. Like over here, we've got distinct magenta and turquoise and royal blue. If we head over to the other side, uh, Lightroom has just smashed these colors. Uh, the magenta is now like a dark purple. 
Uh, all the vibrance is gone out of the turquoise and out of the royal blue. And everything's just been kind of smashed to various shades of navy. And uh, on the step up, same thing. You know, we've got uh, bright turquoise and magenta and this gold color. And over here, it's just like a dull, almost like a periwinkle. And this is like Welch's grape purple. If we move to an indoor shot, uh, you tell the light was dim in here. I had to bump ISO again, 3200, 160th at f6.4. And if we jump in for starters at the corner of this picture, look at all the detail that we have in the canvas here. And that is just all gone. Um, it's just been paved over on this side. And if we look at all the, the details in uh, the hand card, filigree and everything over here uh, this just looks like a soft wet lumpy mess all the reds uh, are gone everything's been kind of smashed down to a dull brown or gray and if we zoom out and come back over here in the bust same thing look at all the detail here in I guess you know the, this leaf over here just smashed flat all that detail is gone same thing with uh, all the detail in these creases and everything on the bust and even in the face jumping over to this flag room let's see if we pop in here you can look again like we're just we're getting this this speckling and artifacts and worming in these large white areas the contrast is not handled well but uh, even more interesting to me if we look over here on this side you can see this palm tree has green leaves and there's a lot of detail in the giraffe we come over here and again the colors have been smashed down it's all just this uniform sad dull brown color so yeah we're losing uh, a lot of color detail as well as edge detail all right jumping over to this indoor pool area again now i'm really pushing iso we're at 5000 uh, 160th at 5.6 and if we go back here and go hunting in the shadows, it's the same thing. Look at the level of detail on this side and the color compared to over here on the Lightroom side. Like you can make out like the individual one by one tiles over, over on the DxO side. Over here, everything just kind of looks like a, a splotchy blue paint job and there's a lot of noise and everything in the shadows here in the doorway on this side at least uh, you know your edges are cleaner and there's uh, there's a lot less noise jumping over here i uh, caught this guy working on uh, a new mural piece in a graffiti park and if we zoom in here Again, like we focus on his skin in here and even in the filter and we come over here again, like you see that warming effect. Um, you see those, those lines and that unnatural texture in here and again in the filter. And you can see that the, uh, the jaggies around the edge of the text are a little more pronounced on his shirt, um, just the edge handling, especially in the areas of great contrast, aren't so great. Um, you see it looked like it was hunting around in these little lines here, kind of trying to figure out the edges between these two colored areas where here, like you just have a more well-defined edge. Uh, here's a little hummingbird that uh, I caught on top of a pool umbrella and uh, same thing we noticed like with the palm tree and the giraffe in the other shot we've got green and some yellow here in the plumage that is just completely lost and everything's been pushed to a brownish gray hue in there and then just again the uh, the detail and the texture in the feathers and in the pool umbrella itself everything is just 
much more well defined and has a better level of detail. Uh, this is just um, kind of smeary and muddled. And then lastly, we've got another little hummingbird shot here. Here you can really see the greens and the yellows and some more of the detail in the feathers. And uh, over here, those colors have been have been knocked flat. They're duller. They don't stand out the same. And uh, we've just yeah, we've got that smearing and warming that takes away from some of the feather detail. And uh, even down in the leaves, you know, here we've got you know, some definition to, you know, the blotches in the leaves, you know, like they kind of have some shapes over here. They're just soft splats. So the results are pretty clear. Processing my raws through DxO Pure Raw 2 before Lightroom gave me dramatically improved sharpness, detail, and colors compared to the standard Lightroom raw handling and there weren't any issues with the ugly worming and other artifacts that we see when we let Lightroom handle the RAWs. What impressed me the most was Pure Raw's ability to denoise and smooth without sacrificing the details or softening the images. Not only do my shots look better with the overall clarity, but it'll pay even bigger dividends if I need to zoom or crop or print. For the sake of comparison, I also tried Pure Raw 2 out with some Nikon files that I had, and the results were still noticeable, but not nearly as dramatic. I encourage anybody on any platform to try Pure Raw 2. The demo is free, but I absolutely recommend it for Fuji users. If you choose to buy, Pure Raw 2 is $129, or $79 if you're upgrading from an earlier version. So it's not dirt cheap, but I feel it's absolutely worth it. It's less than a subscription or a license to Photolab Elite or Capture One Pro, and I can keep using my Lightroom control surface and all of my existing Lightroom plugins. And I don't have to worry about learning a new UI. I'm definitely planning to purchase it once my trial period is up. Will I use it on everything? Hmm, maybe not, but I will definitely use it on my favorite personal shots and on any high stakes client work that I want to look its absolute best. Thanks for watching this installment of Camera Carnage. I hope you found it informative and helpful. I'm Ryan from Seymour Carnage Photography. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them below and I'll get back to them as I can. And as always, like and subscribe if you want to be informed about new content. Until then, take care.